In the previous video, we learned how to create a function declaration. And a function declaration and a variable declaration are similar in so much that they both have an identifier or a name because we plan to call them later on in our JavaScript. But what if we don't need a name? What if we're in a situation where there's just a need for a function, but that function will never get called for the rest of the application, and we know that. Uh, then we can take a different tact. We don't need to add a new identifier. We can just create what's called a function expression, and we don't have to supply a name. We just give it the body of the function and say, here, go do this when you need to run some code. All right, and a good, explain uh, good use of that is uh, whenever we need to create some code that should run in the future. So here, let me start off by creating function uh, expressions.js, a new file. And here I want to use the set timeout method that's available inside of JavaScript. And if we use IntelliSense, we can see that there's actually two input parameters to this function set timeout we're going to first of all need to give it something called a handler which i happen to know is just a function now i could give it a function declaration but usually people just create function expressions here for the handler and then the second thing we'll need to do and i'll use the down arrow to move from the first argument to the second argument is to give it a timeout uh, and so that's the number of milliseconds that i want it to wait before executing this code. And I'll show you how that might be interesting in just a few moments here. But the first thing we need to do is create a function expression to pass in. So just here right in line, I'm gonna create a function open close parentheses, open close curly braces, which denote the body of this expression I'm creating. Inside of here, I'm gonna do something simple like console.log I waited two seconds. <laughs> and then here at the very end of the function declaration, I'm going to give it that second argument, the number of milliseconds that I want to wait before executing that function, that function expression. So I'm going to say wait two seconds, and then I want you to call this inline function I'm creating, and the body of it will merely just log out, I waited two seconds. All right, so here we go. Let's go and uh, do node and then function expressions, one 1,000, two 1,000, and you can see it prints to screen, I waited two seconds, all right. Now, it's kind of hard to read it like this all in line. One of the things in JavaScript that's a little bit challenging, especially if you're getting started, is the number of curly braces that you'll encounter. And differentiating, for example, this outer set of parentheses and this inner set of parentheses and and visual studio code tries to help you like when i put my caret right next to that opening curly brace it tries to find the matching closing curly brace and you'll see as we add more curly braces for different purposes and indentation levels inside of our application visual studio code does a pretty good job most of the time of finding its match it's just a matter of looking for that carrot that surrounds the closing one here over you can see whatever um, uh, in column number 61 here i'm looking at the the bottom okay uh anything inside is just the body of the function and the same rules apply whoops i didn't use a semicolon at the end of that line but i should have all right it shouldn't change the function in this simple case but nothing changes about how we work with this now to be honest, most people do not put this much code on a single line. I may want to split this up into multiple lines. So I would do this in a way that feels natural to me. And you can see that as I put my mouse cursor next to where I feel like the split should have been, like at the beginning of console.log, and here at the end of our body of our function expression, Visual Studio Code naturally will create some indentation. Now, if I don't like that level of indentation, I'm free to come in here and, and to change it up. Like I would prefer to use a tab here. So I'm using the tab key on my keyboard to move things out and the shift tab to move things back. That only works if my mouse cursor is here right at the beginning of that line. If I were to move one character in and use the tab key, well, that's 
you know, that's not what I want at all. That's going to split that word up. But if I use the keyboard, the arrows on the keyboard to maneuver, and then the shift tab to move it out, I can move things in and out. But that is pretty much how I would like to see that function represented, right? And then I use a comma to pass in a second argument, in this case, the number of milliseconds to my set timeout function. All right, so, but the, fo the, the focus of this is that function expression. I never want to use that function again, but I need it in this case as an argument to pass into my set timeout function. All right, so functions can take functions as input parameters, okay? So uh, just keep that in mind because things are going to get a lot crazier than that. And let's move on and talk about um, using both the function declaration and a function expression to do something just a little bit more interesting here. Same basic uh, idea here, um, but what I want to do is start off with a counter. And this will count the number of times that we actually execute our, uh, our function expression. I'm going to start with a function on the outside, function timeout. Let's call this function timeout, like so. And then inside, I'm going to set timeout using that built-in function to JavaScript and pass in a new function expression. All right. And then I'm going to here give set timeout. Say in two seconds, I want you to basically run this. function expression that I've defined right there. So I pass in the second argument of 2000. Again, you, using Visual Studio Code to help me find the matching set of parentheses at the beginning and the end to pass in uh, the uh, input parameter to the set timeout function. Recognizing that the function expression is the first argument to that, and 2000 is the second uh, input parameter to that set timeout function. Here's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to append, so I'm going to put a little space there between high and the closing single quote mark, counter. But I want to, after every time I reference counter, I want to increment it by one. So this will allow me to count the number of times that set timeout has run. Now one of the things that I want to do is after I have printed that line, I'm going to schedule the next time that this code should run. So I'm going to schedule and call timeout in a recursive manner. So I'm using the name of this outermost function and saying, hey, uh, now that you've run me, run me again in two seconds because I'm going to basically call set timeout again. All right, now I need to kick this off the first time. So we'll call set timeout once here on line number 15. And that will kick things off. And then I'm gonna hit Control and C on my keyboard to stop the execution because it'll just keep looping and looping and looping. All right, hopefully in your mind you understand the sequence of events here. I'm going to call this function declaration once the body of that function will create a set timeout in two seconds I want to execute this function expression which will not only show me the number of times that this function has been called because I'm keeping count of it in that counter variable but then also it's going to call the timeout function again which will schedule two seconds from now the next call to the set timeout function okay so let's see it run Hopefully this all makes sense. So I waited two seconds, saw it run once. All right, it's so twice, three times. And you see it'll just keep going every two seconds until I hit Control C on my keyboard to stop its execution. All right. All right, the last thing that I want to show you now, I'm going to comment all this out, is that you can create a function declaration, or I'm sorry, a function expression 
that says something like uh, console.log and uh, I'll make something a little bit more interesting later. And then I can immediately invoke that function by first of all surrounding this function expression in parentheses just to kind of say, hey, I want to group all this together. And then using another set of parentheses as the function invocation operator, like that. Do you see that format? So there's this inner set that we use just to define input parameters. We don't need any, but we still need it in order to create a function expression. Then we're going to group this whole thing together and say, I want to execute it. So there's actually, what, four sets of parentheses, we just have to keep them straight in our mind of what each of them are doing. But this last set will do what's called, and this kind of structure is called an immediately invoked function expression. In other words, I will have a function expression and I want it to be invoked, I invoked immediately when this application is run. And this actually is a pretty common pattern in JavaScript development. It comes in super handy, and we'll talk about why it comes in handy a little bit later. But we want to just remember immediately invoked function expression. It's also just known as an IIFE. Sometimes I think it's pronounced iffy. All right. So keep in mind iffies, and we'll come back to them a little bit later. All right. So let's move on and uh, move away from functions just for a little bit. We'll come back to them later. Uh, but hopefully... You can now tell the difference between a function declaration and a function expression. Most importantly, for our purposes, you want to keep in mind what immediately invoked function expressions are. Okay. All right. So we'll come back to this and uh, let's move on. See you in the next video. Thanks.